So I'm, um, I'm going to have a go at this. Okay, now I, I can do counters here, but it's a bit hard for you guys to see. So I have, um, I have imaginary counters. Now before I start to play with these, let's just make sure we understand what the question is, right? They say, is it possible, can you place several, and they say several, which means that how many is part of the question. Can you place several of these on a, they say on a plane, right? On a flat plane, so that means no stacking, that's what it implies. Such that, what's the condition that you're aiming for? What's the condition? So that every single counter, coin, whatever, is touching exactly three other ones. So that means not two, not four, not six, exactly three, okay? Now, my first question is, you know, I, coming back to when it said several, right? What's the minimum number of coins that can actually, whether or not this, there's a solution to this or not, what's the minimum number of coins that even has a shot, like a vague sort of possibility of getting a solution? Hmm. So let's think about this for a second. One coin, can one coin do it? And clearly the answer is no, because there are no other coins for it to touch. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. Now, when you add in a second coin, you're still in trouble because they're each touching one, but you need to get to three. Okay. Now, once I add in a third coin, well, you've got a single coin that touches two. Is there any way I can have any of these coins? Like, I could shuffle this around. I could, I could move it over here. Is there any coin that can touch three other coins? And the answer is no, because for each coin, there are no three other coins that exist. Does that make sense? There's only two other coins. So therefore, I need a minimum, the absolute minimum that can even have a shot at working is four. So see this setup right now? You've got a single coin that satisfies the condition that you wanted, right? Uh, this guy in here. That one's touching three. But none of the others do, okay? Can I move this around? Can I shuffle this about and make this better? Can I do better than one coin satisfying the condition I'm after? I saw, or so I, I saw some of you who tried with four and you got something better yeah. than this. Fawa, what did you have? Okay, hold on. Before you go on, let's, um, let's put some names on these, right? So as a mathematical uh, principle, when, when we struggle, we're like, how do we talk about these things? You know, that one over there with the, with the stuff and, and the other things. When you don't have labels for things, you can't describe things in a, um, an accurate way. So let's number them, shall we? So let's call these one, two, three, and four. So which one are you talking about, Pavan? You see how quickly having some language here and some labels helps us, right? Because now I know exactly where Fawad wants me to put it. I'm going to put it over here. Okay, so um, is this an improvement? It is. It, it's objectively an improvement because with the same number of coins, uh, this guy is touching three coins, and so is this one. Yeah, so far so good. But then you've got two and four, and they're kind of just sort of stuck there, right? And I hope you realize, you encountered this problem, you're like, it's always the ends. The ends are always the problem because, I'm gonna turn off my internet because I keep getting emails. Because if you put a coin on the end like this, what have we done? Uh, have we improved this situation? Well, it depends how you define improved, doesn't it? You sort of improved it because look at number four. Look at four. Four is good, yeah? But when you have a look at the new one that I've added, five is worse off than all the other ones. It's only touching one, okay? Now, you can try and put five in another position to change this. Like, where could I put five, reposition it, so that it would touch more coins? Because it's only touching one right now. I could move five, so it's still touching four, but I could swivel it around so it's up here. So now five is touching two coins. But what have I done? Yeah, one is no longer satisfying my condition, right? One is now touching four coins, so I'm in trouble. Okay, so let's rewind a little bit. Here we go. So this shape here seems like it will be useful, okay, except for its ends. Now, I saw, I think, was it Jasmine? Was it you who had the suggestion of um, saying, well, what if I just take this whole thing, right, and just do it again, right? 
because now can you see one and three? Well, let's let's give these different names, shall we? Uh, let's call these guys um, A one, A two, A three, A four. We'll call these B one, B two, B three, B four. Because B1 and B3 are in exactly the same configuration as A1 and A3, you know that they work, yeah? Does that make sense? And simultaneously, you've improved this situation, right? Because look at the orphan over here, A4, he's okay, isn't he? And so is B2. They're both good. <sighs> Except we still have this problem. What's the, what keeps on being the problem? It's always the ends. The ends are always the issue. If only we had some kind of shape, because unfortunately, if I do this a, what, a third time, right, um, I still have the same problem, right? If only I had some kind of shape which would not have this problem, that would not have ends which seem to be causing me issues. If only I knew a kind of shape that didn't have ends. A circle doesn't have ends, right? Now, remember I asked you before, this is, is this possible, right? What's the minimum number? We settled on the fact that four is definitely sort of a baseline, but we see we needed more than four because if you want to create a circle, and I, you've got coins in front of you right now, can, can you do this? I'm going to do my best to try and um, swivel these things around. So let's see, let's take these guys, let's sort of rotate them around like this. Whoops, sorry, I missed. Let's put these guys over here. This is not a circle yet, but it's getting there, isn't it? Uh, what can I do? I want this guy to attach over here. How's that look? Does that look good? It's the same shape as before. It's the same chain. I'm just kind of spinning it. I'm just rotating it around, yeah? Okay, what have I got? D is this going to work? Let me try. I'll see. Will I get the shape that I want? How is... Uh, that. What do you think? Whoops, sorry. Does it have the characteristics I need? It's, it's got the chain sort of thing, that which we, we saw was working, it's just the ends. Except, have a look at what the ends are. Where are the ends? Um, they used to be here. This was one of them, right? And then what it joins up to is this guy. That's what it joined up to. So what I've done is I've created a, a loop that goes all the way around. You have a look. Let me get rid of that orange circle because it's sort of in the way. Does everything actually satisfy the condition? It works, right? So is this, is this mathematics? That's not, a, that's not a rhetorical question. Is this mathematics? What, what makes it, I'm doing it in a maths class, so that makes it mathematics. Can we qualify that statement? Because this is not like any other kind of mathematics you've done, right? Um, this is where we distinguish between exercises and problems. Exercises are things you know how to do. You get taught steps, you replicate them, and when you see another exercise, you're, I know exactly what to do here. A problem is unfamiliar by its nature, but you can still fiddle with it and you can still, in fact, many of you got very, very close to getting the solution. It was just for the sake of time that I was like, well, okay, let me show you how to do this, okay?